Hello, I'm Alexis Duran, expert in the supernatural, and this is Dealing with the Supernatural, the show where I tell you how to try to not die. And why? Well, if horror movies have taught us anything, I'm Hispanic, so that means it's my job to teach white people not to do stupid things. Shout out to Jeremy for that joke. Anyway, today we are talking about the Nosferatu, the vampire. Bloodsuckers, the thing that stalks you in the night and is possibly right now right behind you ready to bite you. I'm not kidding. There, uh, at least one person is probably dead already. That's why you got to uh, put the subscribe button, people. You need notifications. Anyway, let's talk about vampires. There are basically four types of vampires. Uh, the first one, let's call them daywalkers. Uh, different cultures, different people, even themselves call all them different things, but let's just go with daywalkers for simplicity's sake. As you may guess, they can walk in the day. They have superior strength than normal humans, are faster, and they tend to have li longer lifespans. Not significantly longer, but enough that, yeah, honestly, you could mistake them for a human just because, hey, they're probably just healthy. They probably take care of themselves, exercise, and yeah. The only major difference between them and normal people is that they do require blood. Usually they get it from uh, trying to eat uh, rare raw meat, rare, raw, you know, uncooked, so they can get the most protein and bloodiness from it. But usually they do require human blood to sustain their lives. Usually once every two months they need a bit of blood. Nowadays, most of those just buy a blood pack from somewhere. It's that you know, if you make connections, you can find that where you can buy some blood. But in olden days, sometimes they did need to attack people just to drain a bit of blood. Most of the time, those people thought they were just being robbed or something and didn't notice that they got some blood stolen. Usually because, you know, they got knocked out. It's easier. Most of these vampires ended up making connections with people, usually a lover of some sort, and they'd get close enough that they'd bite them a little and drain some blood. Not enough to significantly hurt them, but, you know, enough so they could survive. So that became a symbiotic relationship. So, yeah, that's one way to do it. Honestly, even then, it's not that bad. Some of my sources have told me that these vampires have some sort of uh, fair, uh, chemical reaction in their mouth that not only helps the uh, person they bite so that it heals them up faster, but numbs the pain. So uh, sometimes they don't even notice that they're being bitten. And like I said, they're usually harmless. They only need a little blood. And even among them, uh, killing someone to get more blood is a taboo. So, as vampires go, they're pretty harmless. There's nothing to really worry about. They're people with the same human weaknesses as us. So, yeah. Second type of vampire is an emotion vampire. They draw out people's emotions. And the stronger the emotion, the more they drain. They actually drain a bit of their life force from them. Okay, this is where it gets a little tricky. Since these vampires feed off emotions, they've developed this ability to instill them, like an empath. And they really enjoy the negative emotions, those strong emotions, emotions you try to bury deep inside of you, your fear, your rage. They draw it out and it gives them power, it makes them stronger, it makes them live longer. In fact, if they drain you entirely, they can extend their life uh, well, well, a lot. So, uh, but you gotta keep doing that every once in a while. So, yeah, they are dangerous. In fact, during heightened emotions, if they touch somebody with those sort of emotions, they can drain it out. It's a lot easier for them to drain out all that emotion, all that energy, just with a touch. So, yeah, and that whole empathic thing—that's where it gets a little tricky. These vampires can sense your emotions, so most of them are not going to try to kill you because, one, they will feel your pain, your anguish, so it, you know, gives them a great deal of empathy. Unless they're psychotic, which can also happen more often with them, because when you're taking in that much emotion, or foreign emotion, somebody else's emotion, you can't always fathom it, you can't always put it together in your mind, and it can cause some of them to crack and go a little nutty. So, my best advice is, when confronting these sort of vampires, if you're out to slay them, um, yeah, keep a 
calm and level head. Garlic's not going to work, but if you're calm, it will help quite a bit. And, well, no touchy. Yeah. Okay, and the third type of vampire. Energy vampire. These can get a little pale, as actually the emotion vampires. In fact, they might be offshoots of some sort of branch evolution there. I'm not a geneticist or a guy who figures out that sort of stuff, but I think they might be related somewhere down the line. Anyway, these emotion vampires are... Uh, these energy vampires are much more trickier. They can often lose human appearance, and like the emotion vampires can often drain life be a touch, except they don't need you to be excited or in a heightened state. If they just grab onto you long enough, they can drain you, bone and all. Just like every ounce of life in you, just yank it out. Frankly, some say that even just getting close to them is dangerous, because they can do that from a distance. Now, how to deal with these? A lot of these vampire lore for these guys is... is convoluted and complicated. Some say they can even use perform magic because of their great stores of energy. So it gets it gets tricky. But from what I can tell, generally the same vampire rules apply. They can regenerate, so you got to make sure you get, deliver a killing blow, chop off the head because yeah, regenerative types generally can't come back from that. So yeah, make sure you take care of the body and uh, always keeping a level head always helps. And the fourth, and probably the one you suspected would come up, the Nosferatu, the vampire, the the ones you know from the movies, the ones that are cursed to roam the earth. Okay, so here is a bit of lore from vampires themselves. The story goes that they were they weren't always uh like they are in legend now, that they could walk in the daylight, that they could stand the sight of holy items and silver and everything. The, the thing is, this is where it gets a little theologically weird. It is said that at some point these vampires, well, at least one of them, made a deal with some sort of demonic entity, an actual born demon for more power, and in turn, they became the, these dark undead creatures, losing their humanity, having their soul damned, and hunger for blood, and carnage, and everything. But in, in exchange for that power, they became weak to holy items, because their source of power ultimately came from demons. And, yeah, there, this is where it gets weird. I can't really prove any of that happened, but that's where the story goes, and it does make some sense that there's a demonic origin to them. It is said that they are cursed, that their souls are damned, that they... Honestly, it could be just a hunger thing there. It, you know, if you go in the whole basic Christianity thing, if you, you know, you you give in to your temptations, you're doomed, and this is just adding another worse temptation. So, yeah, it could work that way, honestly. It's a cheap trick, but demons aren't exactly known as being fair with those sort of stuff. So, anyway, these are weak to sunlight. And, well, yeah, you know the rest. Chop off the head. They, I don't know where the dirt thing comes from. I know in Dracula it says you gotta uh, sleep in your own earthly grave or something. I don't know where they got that. I heard Dracula does it, but I don't know if that's just like his own quirk. Anyway, there are some interesting facts about these dark creatures of the night. For some reason, I think it might be a genetic thing. I'm, it's, there's some people say it is a genetic trait already, so maybe. That they have a, a certain kind of OCD. The thing is, I, I wouldn't use it as a way to fight them, but, you know, it might help. That they have to count things, usually rice or beans. If it's spilled before them, they are compelled to pick them up and count them. So, yeah, that's weird. Count from Sesame Street might have some backing in lore. Huh. Anyway. Uh, yeah, sun is always a good effect against them, and garlic is too. 
and so is running water. This is the interesting thing about running water and garlic. There does seem to be a general weakness for vampires with that. Uh, day walkers don't seem typically offended. It just seems that they, they steer away from it. Like, it, it's unappealing to them or it's just too strong. That might be just a sense thing. Garlic is very potent thing. So maybe their heightened senses just can't take all of that. Maybe it's just a vampire per vampire thing. But with the, these night walkers, it is very violent to them. It might just be repellent. It is said that some things like these affect uh, bats and insects. But yeah, that could just be a coincidence, honestly. And as for running water, it might be something uh, mystical. As it's said that uh, water can often be purified or something like that, it would naturally affect something with a demonic trait in it. But then again, it also tends to affect the energy vampires, which I think a running current of water just tends to disrupt their own magic or energy field. So, yeah, there's something about that. Anyway, the, and one last thing about vampires, which I actually kind of find funny. They don't like the uh, Twilight. Most of them find it very confusing as why vampires there just sparkle. I, I don't know. I, I can't say anything for them. In fact, there are a number of uh, Nightwalkers that do like the series because it makes them, it makes it easy for them to hunt down people. There are certain subsets of people who have turned to believe that all vampires are dark and brooding and just need help, and they're pouncing on that, telling them that's the truth and getting them somewhere away from crowds to uh, nibble on them. Yeah, it, 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 they did that when I sh uh, Anne Rice was popular too. So yeah, it's repeating itself. They're just finding it a lot easier with Twilight. So safety tip: if you meet a vampire and they want to meet you alone, maybe don't. Yeah, honestly, if if you ignore that piece of advice, which I honestly shouldn't have to give, and you get yourself eaten, well. Yeah, it's like, okay, good for you, Darwin Award winner. Anyway, so that's it for vampires. Try not to get eaten. That's my best advice. Some of them don't. Okay, and try not to be, like, offensive. I mean, yeah, daywalkers are harmless. Nightwalkers are always a hunger for blood. I wouldn't say tell or be afraid of daywalkers like that. You know, that's just prejudice. So, yeah, try to use common sense, think, and just stay on your guard a little bit. See how this person acts. Yeah, so don't be prejudiced. That's that's my advice for you. Anyway, I've been Alexis Duran, and I got to go pick up my $5 for doing this video. So, yeah, whatever. Uh, subscribe, I guess. Put on the notifications links. Uh, share the links and comment below asking me what else you want me to talk about. I pre have a good understanding of pretty much every supernatural thing or I have access to research papers or stuff in books so I can figure out the rest. So yeah, comment below. Tell me what you think and what else would you like to hear me talk about. And I'll probably do a video eventually. So I know a guy asked me to do something on the Frankenstein monster and I am actually friends with Adam. So that might be coming out soon. So, yeah, comment below and let me know what you think. So, all right. So, yeah, stay safe out there.